Hey guys, there's no doubt that the Raspberry Pi is one of the hottest pieces of technology this year. It can do a lot of things with it, and with the Raspberry Pi just now being shipped out, a ton of people are trying to find out new and cool things to do with this embedded piece of technology. And uh, for those of you who don't know, the Raspberry Pi is a simple $25 or $35 computer. Um, it runs on an ARM processor. It can run Linux um, and has a couple of USB ports if you buy the $35 option um, and everything like that. But it's more than capable of uh, doing a lot of things. A lot of people are experimenting with home automation and different pieces of technology. Um, I myself had you know, tried to figure out what I could do with this cool piece of technology whenever I first got it. And um, I like pinball machines, so I figured, why don't we try to control a pinball machine with a Raspberry Pi? It's just one of the cool things that you can do with a Raspberry Pi that nobody else out there seems to be doing. So um, it's, it's really, um, all we'll actually need is just a USB cable. And um, the only thing that uh, the Raspberry Pi will connect to is a utility called the P-Rock. And the P-Rock is called the Pinball Remote Operations Controller. It's made by pinballcontrollers.com. Um, it ha allows you to put this in a drop-in replacement for a whole bunch of uh, 90s uh, pinball games and uh, allows you to connect a computer to it, i.e. the Raspberry Pi or remote controller or remote processing unit like the Raspberry Pi over USB and send commands to the game and, and basically customize the game any way that you want to. You can customize the sound or the behavior. So um, I decided that uh, we'd try this on an Adams Family pinball machine. Uh, it's one of the hottest selling, it is the hottest selling pinball machine of all time. Um, made in the 90s and uh, it's a great game but uh, let's see if we can make it talk with the Raspberry Pi and see what we can do. Um, with this Raspberry Pi in conjunction with uh, this piece of hardware called the P-Rock uh, we should be able to control the display, we should be able to control the lights, the sounds, the flippers, everything. Uh, so we should be able to totally trick this game out but I'm going to show you uh, that it is uh, possible and is a really cool thing to do to control an entire pinball machine. A really cool piece of 90s retro technology uh, with something as small as a Raspberry Pi. So here we go. Alright, so we remove the old CPU board right there. Move the old CPU board from the machine and we have the P-Rock installed. Uh, or actually it's, it's situated right now. So now we've just got to uh, go ahead and connect all the connectors in the old place and we should be ready to power it up. Alright, so now our Raspberry Pi is booted up and uh, we've got the USB cable from our pinball machine coming from the P-Rock into the, uh, one of the USB ports on the Raspberry Pi. We also have the Ethernet cable so we can SSH into it. Um, it's just got an IP on the LAN. And we're also using the SD card power source as well as the uh, sound output which goes up to some speakers that we've supplied. Um, and um, that'll give us the sound for the game. So now that it's uh, booted up into Linux, let's uh, SSH into it and see if we can uh, get it rolling here. Okay, so now we're in our Raspberry Pi and uh, we have the Python libraries installed. We've also installed this uh, PyProc game framework, which we outlined earlier, uh, as well as the libpin proc, which allows the uh, Raspberry Pi to communicate with VROC. It actually works on any Linux distribution, but uh, it works uh, really well on the Raspberry Pi. So uh, we whipped up a simple TAF or the Adams Family game um, that has a couple of modes in it. And so what we can do is we can run this, but it has to be run as root because it's accessing a USB device, otherwise the system will throw a permission denied error. Um, so we're as root right now in uh, the Adams Family code directory and we have a couple of files here. So we actually do an ls here. We've got a couple of uh, Python files. We've got uh, one for the attract mode, one for the greed mode, um, another one for that's the main entry file, and we also have one for the thing mode and the trough mode. So. Um, thing mode is, is you're going to see here in a minute, which allows the hand to pick up the ball and, and throw it underneath the play field. Uh, the trough manages um, how many pinballs are in the trough and when to eject the ball into the shooter lane, etc. The attract.py manages the attract mode, which is just some sweeping light shows and everything. And, and um, greed is, is what controls the bookcase, which enables another mode. So we've got a couple of cool examples here, but uh, right now, if we just run Python and run our taf.py file, 
Um, it will start the program and it will connect up to the PROC. may take a minute though. Uh, the Raspberry Pi takes a couple of minutes to uh, detect the hardware. So while that's running, while that's running, if we take a look at our Adams Family machine, we should see it come out of a track or come into a track mode here from this PROC screen in a minute once the Raspberry Pi takes over. It's going to take a minute or so for that code to load up uh, since it does have to initialize and uh, load up all the sounds. And the Raspberry Pi is not the most powerful, but um, it, it works really well after it gets going. So uh, you'll see uh, quite a result. And we'll just zoom out here and uh, we'll set up the tripod so we can get a look as soon as it goes into attract mode. And there it goes. All right, so now the Adams family is running in attract mode. Looks great. Uh, you've got the light shows, just uh, running through some sample light shows that we wrote in a text file. You can check out all that code there and the dot matrix display is running. All right, so we're going to set up the tripod and we'll get a game. All right, okay, so now we're all set up for our game. Uh, the game is running through the attract mode and uh, we have the dot matrix display going on up there. Everything looking good. So if we zoom out a little bit, we should be able to catch most of the play field. And uh, I will show the dot matrix display to show you that it's keeping score. So uh, I had to take the glass off. The glare is a little bit bad, but um, we're going to see if we can do this. So hopefully it won't be too loud. All right, so the, the game has started. It launched the ball into the shooter lane so we can pull the plunger, and uh, the score is zeroed out. So here we go. The game is responsive to events. Flippers and everything work. Whenever we hit the bookcase, we hit the bookcase and everything works just fine. It responds. So we hit the bookcase about five times, or spell greed. Uh, right now we have GNR. We hit the bookcase five times and it should open up. P-Rock is handling all of these uh, flippers in real time. Make sure the game stays top speed. There it is. We opened up the bookcase. So now, if we shoot where the skull is into Thing's hideout, we should uh, get Thing going. There it goes. The hand comes out, picks up the ball, drops it underneath the play field. And spits it back out. All that machinery being controlled by the Raspberry Pi, sending commands to the P-Rock. Um, the amazing things you can do with the Raspberry Pi, P-Rock, and Python. Uh, major thanks to Adam Preble and the PyProc game, um, the rest of the PyProc game contributors. Um, they did a wonderful job in this framework. And voila. And the running scoreboard keeps track of everything as it happens. Hit okay, some targets. There you go. Thanks guys. Well, hopefully you've seen that it is possible to control a pinball machine with something as simple as a Raspberry Pi. Uh, all you need is a little interface board to connect it up and we use the P-Rock to that. It serves just fine. Uh, allows us to control all of the uh, flippers and coils and sounds, uh, well, the, uh, the, the coils and lights in real time. 
and uh, the sounds are piped out of the Raspberry Pi and we use it with something as simple as a language called Python uh, which comes uh, in the default boot image for Raspberry Pi um, and we used a, a sample framework to throw in a couple of modes and, and get it rolling so um, you know thank you guys and uh, feel free to download the code from uh, github.com slash compi it should be in the uh, TAF or the Adams Family Directory and you guys can feel free to check that out thanks a bunch